Welcome to our today's tutorial. Welcome. Today we're going to look at chest tube drainage systems. A chest tube drainage system or an underwater seal drainage system is a closed system which is used to remove air and fluid from the pleural space. The pleural space is based between the lungs and the chest wall. This system prevents the reverse flow of this air and fluid into the pleural space. It achieves this function by submerging the end of the chest tube in water within a drainage bottle, creating a one-way valve effect. And it is basically designed to return a negative pressure into the intrapleural space. Some of the clinical indications for chest tube insertion include pneumothorax, which is an air leak in the pleural space causing the lungs to collapse due to a compression. Hemothorax, same as pneumothorax, however, in this case, it is blood that is in the pleural space instead of air. We insert a chest tube in conditions such as empyema or the collection of pus in the pleural cavity. A pleural effusion where we have fluid excess in the pleural space. Chylothorax where there is an accumulation of chyle in the pleural space and as well we can insert a chest tube as a surgical drain postoperatively following surgeries such as cardiac surgery, a thoracotomy or a mediastinal surgery. Let us have a look at the components of a chest tube drainage system. The first component is a drainage collection chamber. A drainage collection chamber is down here where the chest tube from the client connects to the system. The drainage from the chest tube drains into and collects in a series of calibrated columns in this chamber to allow accurate measurement. The second part or component is a water seal chamber. The tip of the tube is underwater, allowing fluid and air to drain from the pleural space while preventing the re-entering of this air and fluid back to the pleural space. We can say it prevents backflow. In this chamber, water oscillates by moving up as the client inhales and moving down as the client exhales, indicating that there is a normal pressure changes. And it's important for you to know that Excessive bubbling indicates an air leak in the chest tube system. Another component is the suction control chamber. The suction control chamber provides a controlled suction to generate a negative pressure in the chest. And this chamber is filled with various levels of water to achieve the desired suction. Without this control, the lung tissue could be damaged by either being pulled into the chest tube. It is important for you to notice that gentle bubbling in this chamber is normal and indicates that suction is working. It does not mean that the air is escaping from the pleural space. Another important component is an air leak monitor, which detects and assesses for air leaks from the pleural space. Looking at this image here, Starting from the bottom right, we have the collection chamber. Then we have an air leak monitor, which is here, labeled as C. We have a suction monitor below. Then we have a suction control regulator. We have a positive pressure release valve, which is a safety valve. The suction port is on top here. We have a manual high negative ventilator that then a chest drain connector to the patient. We have two types of uh, suction system where we have a wet suction and a dry suction. The one that we have looked at earlier on is a wet suction system. And for this case, we have a dry suction system. Because this is a dry suction system, the absence of bubbling is noted in the suction control chamber. A knob on the collection device is used to set the prescribed amount of suction and then the wall suction source dial is turned on until a small orange floater valve appears in the window on the device. When this floater valve appears, it means that the correct amount of suction has been applied. Looking at the parts of a dry suction system, 
we have a dry suction regulator which is on this side a water seal chamber labeled uh, b which prevents backflow and acts as a one-way valve air leak monitor down here which detects any air leaks by showing bubbles and then we have a drainage collection system just like a wet suction system where we collect and measure the chest drainage and lastly we have an indicator which is a suction indicator to confirm that the suction is active at the set level when a patient has a chest tube drainage system in place we have a number of interventions that we need to implement or monitor for these patients on the collection chamber we need to monitor for drainage and notify the primary healthcare provider if a drainage is more than 70 to 100 milliliters per hour or if a drainage becomes bright lead meaning there's active bleeding or it increases suddenly we need to mark the chest tube drainage in the collection chamber at one to four hour intervals using a permanent marker on the water seal chamber we monitor for fluctuation of the fluid level in the water seal chamber and a fluctuation in the water seal chamber stops if the tube is kinked or obstructed if an independent lube exists if the suction is not working properly or if the lung has re-expanded meaning we have resolved the pneumothorax if the client has a known pneumothorax intermittent bubbling in the water seal chamber is expected as air is being drained from the chest but a continuous bubbling usually indicates an air leak in the system. We need to notify the primary healthcare provider if there is a continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber. We need to notify the primary healthcare provider if there is a continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber. On the suction control chamber, a gentle bubbling should be noted in the suction control chamber of a wet suction system. And in some cases, we have a portable chest drainage system where a small portable chest drainage is available and they're usually dry systems that use a control flutter valve to prevent the backflow of air into the client's lungs. All the principles of gravity and pressure as well as the nursing care which are involved are the same for all the types of drainage systems and these systems which are portable allow a great ambulation for the patient and allow the client to go home with a chest tube in place. An occlusive started dressing is maintained at the insertion site all times. A chest radiograph is used to assess the position of the tube and as well to determine if the lungs have re-expanded or if the pneumothorax has resolved. As a healthcare provider, you need to assess respiratory status and auscultate for the lung sounds, you assess for chest tube dressing for drainage and you palpate the surrounding tissue for any crepitus. You as well need to monitor for signs of extended pneumothorax or hemothorax and keep the drainage system below the level of the chest and the tube should be free of kinks, dependent loops or other obstructions. Ensure that all the connections are secure and these patients, we always encourage them to cough and perform deep breathing exercises. You change the client's position frequently to promote drainage and ventilation. You are not supposed to strip or to milk a chest tube unless specifically directed by the responsible healthcare provider. You keep a clamp and a started occlusive dressing at the bedside at all times. And you're not supposed to clamp a chest tube without a prescription from the doctor or the surgeon. If the drainage system cracks or breaks, you insert a chest tube into the bottle of the started water, remove the cracked or the broken system and replace it with a new system. Depending on the primary healthcare provider's preference, when the chest tube is removed, the client may be asked to take deep breath and hold it and then the tube is removed. This is usually the standard approach that we always do. Or a client may be asked to take a deep breath, exhale and bear down. 
by performing what we call a valsava maneuver. A dry sterile dressing, petroleum ghost dressing or a telford dressing is taped in place after the removal of a chest tube. And if in case the chest tube is pulled out of the chest accidentally, you need to pinch the skin opening together, apply an occlusive sterile dressing and cover this dressing with overlapping pieces of a 2 inch tape and call the primary healthcare provider immediately. Tidaling or fluctuation in the fluid level occurs when the pressure changes in the pleural cavity. For example, when a patient breathes in and out and during inspiration, as a negative pressure increases, so does the water level. During expiration, Negative pressure in the pleural space decreases and the water level as well decreases. If a patient is on the mechanical ventilator, you will observe the opposite effect in the water column. This is due to the positive pressure inside the lungs, which is applied by the ventilator instead of a negative pressure that normally occurs with a non-assisted breathing. Take note of that. And lastly, what are the safety features of these drainage system. For all this drainage system that we have looked at, we have a safety feature. For example, we have an underwater seal, a transparent collection chamber for you to monitor, a positive pressure release valve, we have a manual high negative pressure ventilator, suction control, air leak monitor, and a retractable stand and a bedside hanging arms so that you can prevent accidental spills.